Okay, before I start my speech, uh, I would like to go directly over the points that I would like to go. And later on, we will talk about me, my business and everything. Why? Because time is really important. And for me, spreading the idea is way much more important than my introduction. What is marketing? I would like to define marketing in a different way. Think of a business, uh, business like a body, like a body of human, completely, like a person. Then you've got clothing, which is gonna be the branding. Then what you have is the voice, which is the marketing. Marketing means the voice or the communication channel between you and your customers. So that means that whenever you are communicating with your customer, you're using your voice. But don't, don't get this wrong with only voice because marketing is a set of activities actually. But we're gonna define it as a voice. So now let's think of marketing in third world countries, especially those countries which are going uh, under development and they're gonna be having. So what sets of challenges, problems are you gonna be facing? Marketing by itself is gonna be your voice. So if you're not doing a right marketing, then you have got a really big pain in your throat. So over here, now you need to be focusing on those stuff which are gonna be the challenges. The first challenge of every marketer inside third world country will be data. Why? Because we cannot just guess. If I'm gonna be like a businessman and I would have like around like a million dollar and I would be investing that million dollar in a third world country, I will not be investing on guesses. I would like to have an accurate plan and approach to my, what? To my customers. Okay. Now, most of the people, they tell me that, why do I need data collection? What is the importance of the data collection? And how much is it really important for me as a small business or a medium enterprise or a huge enterprise to have data? I would say yes, for all of it, for all of it. Think of it like in this way. Now you have got a problem and you are solving that problem. So you're going to have a business. And when you're gonna have a business, you want to have the right customer. For example, think of an ad, which is gonna be made for who? For mature people. So you would need a really deep voice in order to make the trust. But, 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 but. If you're gonna have an, a product which would be uh, oriented towards the children, if you're gonna have the same deep voice, drink your milk every day. That won't work, right? That, that would create this kind of fear, this kind of wrong channel and wrong communication, even though the message is the same. But the uh, psychology and the tone is not right. So you need to have data for understanding and how it's gonna be going. Eğer ben böyle konuşursam, siz hiçbir şey bilmeyeceksiniz. Eğer siz Türkçe bilmiyorsanız. Biliyoruz. Kaç kişi biliyor ya? Allah Allah, çok fazla varmış. So, if I'm going to be speaking Turkish to a group of people that they are not going to be understanding Turkish, so that's going to be a wrong channel. So that means localization is going to be a part of your data collection. So if you're not gonna have data in the first stage, you cannot localize. Okay, we have found some sort of a way for the data collection. Now we're gonna move to the second challenge, which is technology. So technology uh, is gonna be one of those barriers which are gonna be always right in front of your face whenever you're gonna be doing business in third world countries. Why there is always this kind of restrictions with the technology that you're going to be receiving. 
How are you going to solve that? It's simple. Don't go for brands. Go for those softwares which are going to be having the functionality. If you cannot buy the software, go for that thing. Go for a specific software you're going to have uh, with the same functionality rather than being uh, having a brand. So think of this, that if you cannot buy a Mercedes-Benz, buy a Toyota. Buy a cheaper option. It will drive, you know, it will do the job for you. But if you want to have like, like that specific thing, I'm sorry. So this part sometimes uh, can be solved by, by networks, by communications, and mostly by finding a functionality instead of a brand. Now we're going to go for the third challenge, which is economical and political instability, which is kind of out of your hand. You cannot control, you know, you, can, you cannot become president in one day or you cannot become the Minister of uh, Economics. So what you need to do is simple, that you need to have your analysis properly aligned. You need to have a proper SWOT analysis. You need to have a really a strong emphasis on all of those analysis, which are going to be crucial for your product. You're going to need to have four P's analysis. You need to have all of those analysis aligned, prepared, and ready. So you're going to solve this issue with a smart strategy and analysis. Now I'm going to move to the last and major problem between the third world countries, especially in the marketing department. Since I've been working inside the market of Afghanistan for almost like six years, I strongly, I strongly, I strongly, once again, I'm emphasizing on this, as the job description. Most of the time, the job description of a marketer is completely different. For example, inside the job description of a marketer would be directly sales involved. Then why do you need salesperson? Then what is the salesperson doing if the marketer is going to do the sales? Or the guy is asking that the guy should be knowing the skills of sales management, marketing, digital media, creative photography, videography, and the guy should be able to fly as well. So exactly, so, so that's not how it works. You need to be having a proper set of job description for the marketers. And specifically, since marketing is a really, 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 really huge field, you would need to have describe it in a much, much better way. Like you can have digital marketing, you can have pragmatic marketing, you can have uh, so uh, you, can, you can have email marketing departments, you can have physical marketing departments. So there is tons of it. But you can uh, simplify that by making a specific job details and job requirements. So these are the challenges. But guys, let's talk about something really, 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 really important over here. That's gonna be the advantage <coughs> what kind of advantage advantage do you have that the other people in the first world they do not it's one thing competitive edge same way same way that between all of the third world most of the third world businesses is going to be uh, they're going to be underestimating the the use of uh, proper uh, theories and proper ideologies the same way that you were doing it, they're going to do it as well. So that means that they're going to be always underestimating the technology, they're always going to be blaming, they always be, will be complaining, and meanwhile, you're going to be like having all of those challenges sorted out and you're going to have your work aligned. So it's simple. Two plus two is equal to four everywhere. So when we are talking about psychology, psychology is everywhere. Marketing is everywhere. But with the right people, you need to have localized marketing rather than focusing on your own kind of taste. You need to be talking to the people in their own language rather than talking in a, some sort of a foreign language which might be not that much accessible for them. 
So localization is going to be your best advantage, your best friend that will be always beside you. Now, let's get back to me. My name is Ahmed Shabir Forrest. I'm CEO and the founder of Tajaratistan. I've been working for six years in the marketing department and specifically in the pro pragmatic marketing department. So with the pragmatic, usually we are going around with psychology stuff and all of those things which are going to be not uh, in, in, a, you know, in a space. They're going to be on the papers and we're going to be following up with the data and all of those stuff. Between those six years, I've experienced all of these challenges over here and I've solved them. And that way, I've, created, I've created multiple camp successful campaigns for different organizations with different goals and ideas. But most of the time, the people ask me that, Ahmad, uh, I don't have time for marketing. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. I, I just want to drink my coffee and said, you know, like, like that's, that's going to be the thing. So I give them a simple, short solution. Always be outsourcing. Always. Why? The benefit of outsourcing for you is this, that you're giving work to professional people without risking. You, you might be thinking with yourself, okay, I've got this business, I know how to run this, I will go for this, I will go for that. But at the end of the day, you cannot do everything. You just need to have multiple projects outsourced for multiple agencies. You know, like, uh, I would like to have a little bit of Persian over here. And inside uh, Iran, there is something called Achar Faransa. Yes. Achar Faransa is used for everything. It can be a hammer, it can be a screwdriver, it can be all everything. Don't be an Achar Faransa. You cannot do any, all of this stuff. You might, be, you might have the scales, you might have all of those things, but it's going to be at the end of the day, you're going to be just procrastinating everything, and you're going to be just thinking with yourself inside a loop, uh, and from that loop, you won't get out. That's going to be for sure. So always try to share the cake, always try to share the work, and that's going to have a better output. Have a question as well. Okay, you have got a question? Well, we have a word for this in Persian as well. What was that? Jamil Kamalad. Jamil Kamalad, yeah. Uh, but, but inside my region, they call it Azar Peshe Bekara. Yeah. <laughs> so, if there is any question, I would be more than happy to answer. And uh, I think I'm, uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be afterwards, after the, after the speech. So, it was really nice to meet you guys. It was a pleasure. Once again, thanks again, uh, Sahil Jan, uh, for your team, for your wonderful team that they have arranged something like, like extraordinary over here. I really do appreciate everything. And uh, that's it. Thanks a million, guys.